seen me to glory. Whom have I in heaven but thee? And there is none upon earth that I desire besides thee. My flesh and my heart fail. But God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. I will ransom them for the power of the grave. I will redeem them from death. Oh, death, I will be thy plagues. Oh, grave, I will be thy destruction. As touching the dead, that they rise. Have you not read in the book of Moses how in the bush God spake unto him, saying, I am the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. He is not the God of the dead. The God of the living. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming, and now is, when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they that hear shall live. For as the Father hath life in himself, so have he given to the Son to have life in himself and have given him authority to execute judgment also because he is the Son of Man. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am there you may be also. So also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption. It is raised in incorruption. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown a natural body, and there is a spiritual body. And so it is written, the first man Adam, was made a living soul. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. How be it that was not first which is spiritual, but that which is natural. And afterward that which is spiritual, the first man is of the earth, earthly. The second man is the Lord from heaven. As is the earthy, such are they also that are earthy. And as is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. And as we are born the image of the earthy, we shall, we shall, also bear the image, the image of the heaven. You may be seated in the presence of God. We thank you for coming today to be a blessing to this family. For the next 15 minutes, we invite you to come and to fellowship with this wonderful family. Show your love to them and let them know that you are with them and you are for them. Even right now, your presence speaks volumes.
want you to come and greet this family.
This praise shall continue with me in my mouth. My soul make, shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. They looked unto him and were lightened. And their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried and the Lord heard him and he saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord had kept him around about them and fear him and delivered them. Oh, taste and see yes. that the Lord is good. Yes. Blessed is the man or the woman, anybody, everybody that trusted in him. Yes. Can we just give God thanks for a moment for the life of Jesus and celebrate the Lord of heaven?
clergy here today to assist in this homeboy celebration. Uh, Reverend John Parker, who will lead us in the Old Testament scripture, the 23rd Psalm. Reverend Gloria Brooks Hayes will come and lead us in the New Testament scripture, coming from 2 Corinthians, the 5th chapter, verses 1 through 8. And then uh, Reverend John B. Doe Jr., Amen. Reverend Dr. John B. Doe Jr., Amen. will come and, and render a prayer of comfort to this great family. And follow that, we will follow the program that's printed with him of comfort, sessions from Floyd and Pettit the third. We'll come back with the novels from the church clerk. Uh, we'll come back with the special selections from the family. And then yours truly will come and bring the word of comfort. Amen. May God bless this worship experience. <coughs>
we come to thank you for all the Christian people who lived and shared many enjoyable days with all of us. Thank you for a husband who would have to continue the journey without her. We thank you for the children, the grandchildren, and all of those who love us so much. And as we come, we just want to say thank you, Lord, that you allowed us to meet, to greet each other, to allow each of us to fellowship with her. And we realize our Father that that's just a part of life because you give it. And we realize the other day, it was you who called her from these mortal remains. Yes. Because of our faith in Jesus Christ, yes. you did give her a brand new life. Yes. So we just want to thank you for Jesus Christ. Thank you. Who made it all possible that even when we say foul well here in this world, that is always a hello young in the glory land. Yeah. Thank you, Father, Thank you. for what you've done for all of us. And we ask now if you will continue to bless the family of Sister Betty. We would have to have a long journey back home. But I know you're able to keep them safe and sound. So we just want to say thank you. We praise you because you're worthy of our praise. Yes, sir. Thank you, Brother Pity. And Lord, I realize now, and I think all of us realize the fact that he'll find some lonely days, some lonely nights. But we just thank you for the Holy Spirit who made a promise. Yes. When he said, I believe in Jesus Christ. Yes, sir. Made a promise that even in the darkest hour you will be with him. Yes. So our Father, we depend on your promise now. Bless our pastor today. And other ministers that have come to share in this homeboy service. Thank you for our family. Bless us. The word that he will bring to all of us. Yes. And help each of us to recognize the fact that death, there is nobody comes to the body. So we thank you for Jesus. He made it all possible that we can live after die. Yes. In his name we pray.
God for the privilege of being here with you today. I feel I haven't been all over the Penny family, but I met Sister Estella and Theo Penny during the time that I served here as an interim pastor. And uh, I learned to love them. I've been, there, I've been in their home. And, uh, but that one experience that I never forget, uh, after service today, Sisterhood came, let her play with my wife. We decided to, to get some lunch. And uh, I didn't know where we were going, but anyway, we went home, we got there behind them, and we stopped at the old Henry Hotel. And we did not know what the order was. Sister Penny, she looked at the menu. And she saw on the menu a Don Hamburger. <laughs> a Don Hamburger. And I said, what's that? Wife didn't know. But anyway, we ordered what we called Don Hamburger. It was so good. We talked and laughed about the dawn hammer for a long time. And I, I, I think the last time we, we met here at church, I told her that I wanted another dawn hammer. <laughs> it was good. And from that on, we laughed about that. And we have, I met her several times since then, we were laughing about that. And I called, I called her home many times just to see how they were doing. So finally, I want you to know you have to bring parents. And may God bless you. God hasn't done anything wrong. He just crawled his own back to him. Yes. But you know he fixed it one day so that y'all can be reunited. Amen. He sent his son to die on the cross. Yes. And after dying, they let him lay in the grave for three long days. But early one Sunday morning, he got up. You know where he got up? He wanted you to gather again. All of them.
Deaconess Estelle Victoria Pettit, a faithful member and Christian leader. Whereas Shiloh Baptist Church is a fellowship of believers, having been led by the Holy Spirit to accept the Lord Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And whereas Shallow Baptist Church has benefited from the devotion of Sister Estella Victoria Haddock as a faithful member of this congregation for over 30 years, exemplifying Christian behavior inside and beyond the walls of Shallow through dedicated and exemplary service on the Deaconess Missionary Sunday School Bible Study Others and Health Nurses Ministries Mellow X Season Saints Summer Enrichment Programs in Northwest Ten. And where as Deaconess
And then I have a special selection so I have to have
they make their way to the seat. Can we just sing that the last part that the church has to praise God? But the best way to sing it is with your 
lies. The family tells me, and I told you already, that the 23rd Psalm was one of her, was a favorite scripture. And you know, if, if, if we were taking a survey, they've done that throughout the many centuries, but the 23rd Psalm is always right up there as the most popular of all the scriptures uh, that is known ever since we began reading this Bible. But the 23rd Psalm is a hymn. Uh, we've been singing some hymns today, haven't we? It's a hymn. It, it is out of uh, Israel's original hymn book, out of the song book, and it expresses confidence in the Lord and how the Lord will take care of you. David takes a woman, he's the songwriter that is. David pins these words and says, he said, he takes the time to sing praises to God. David takes a moment to reflect on his experiences with God. David looks back over his life and all the things that he has been brought through in his life. And David comes to this conclusion uh, to about God. Is there anyone here who's ever done uh, what David has done? Have you taken a moment to reflect back on your life and, and think about all of the dangers seen and unseen that you made it through? Uh, and if you have taken that time to reflect, you can only come to the conclusion that David comes to uh, in this 23rd Psalm. Is there anyone here who knows who's done what David has done? Uh, do, do you know uh, who it is that brought you thus far along the way uh, down through the years? Uh, I'm sure that if Vicki, and I'm going to use a word that we don't use much in the day, she had, she had experienced the vicissitudes of life. Don't get mad at this in the dictionary. Yeah, she had been through some trials. Uh, she's been through some tribulations. I, I know uh, the, anybody here that who climbed up the rough side of the mountain and, and they just finished singing. When you had some trials, some tribulations in your life, and you have time to look back and think things over, and you come to some realization in your life, I'm sure that she knew that the Lord had been good to her. I'm sure that Vicky knew uh, that the Lord had brought her a mighty long way. Uh, she was born uh, in, out there in Missouri. Missouri is called the Show Me State Lord. Yeah, if, you know, in other words, you got to show them before they believe. Uh, but I believe uh, that we can live long enough uh, that, she, that God has shown her and revealed to her that he is uh, who he says he is. Uh, in fact, uh, that she had, you know, the reason why they call it Show Me State is because uh, they, they said, look, people in Missouri got conversations. And, and she had common sense, y'all. She had common sense to realize uh, that she didn't make it in life all by herself. She had common sense, the same common sense that David said he had. Uh, he said, David says that the Lord uh, is my shepherd. David says uh, that, you know, uh, what did y'all know about sheep? Y'all know about shepherd. But, but David lived in a biblical time when there were, you know, people did some farming, y'all. And some of y'all got from Missouri. Y'all know about farms. Yeah, y'all know about farms and cattle and all that stuff. But they had sheep. And, and the sheep, you know, the sheep have to be careful, don't they? The sheep don't take care of themselves. They'll go all over the place. But they have, the Lord is a shepherd. And so what he's saying is that just like a shepherd takes care of his sheep, that the Lord takes care of his people. Oh, that's something to be glad about, y'all. That the Lord takes care of his people. And then David goes on in his 23rd Psalm to describe in great degree that care. First he says the Lord provides for his people. Now, that, is, is that true? The Lord supplies uh, each and all our needs. Uh, David has lived long enough to know that whatever he needs, God's got him. That's what Vicki Pettit discovered in her life. Uh, the Lord took her from Missouri and took her uh, really literally all over the world and provided for all her needs. Uh, the Lord allowed her to pursue a career in, in nursing. Uh, the Lord allowed her to meet uh, and marry the love of her life. Uh, look, it didn't take her long to figure out the Lord was the right one, baby. And, and look, they, they got a kiss and they were his until God called her home. The Lord allowed them to raise a family daughters and sons, and provide them with a great childhood. If they, if they don't have it, it's not because you're going to give it to them. If, if they don't get it, they, they should have been firmly rooted. They were brought up in the tradition of the faith. The Lord provided them, 
provided her, provided for with a place to call home and allowed her to live and not just live by the skin of the teeth, but to live well and think and do something else about the Lord's care of her life. Not only did the Lord provide for their physical needs, but the Lord allowed them and allowed her to not have a green patch. She had a good life. Had a good life. Did a wonderful life. Had some good times along the way. And, and, and they were telling us that for the last trips they took uh, before COVID, they went down to Myrtle Beach and, and she was dancing in the chair. Lord have mercy. Can't you see her dancing, having the love of family, enjoying the grandkids, the great grandkids, able to enjoy the good life with family and so many new friends who showed up. Isn't that what the love? To let her know that the Lord uh, had, had taken a green pastures. Then she said, you know, the Lord brought her steel waters. Lord, y'all know steel waters run deep. Uh, yeah, and, and then there were peaceful moments in her lives. There were times when, when they went the rough side of the mountain. There were times when, 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 when you know, there, there, there were no storm clouds gathering in her lives. There were times when she was able to reflect about the goodness of the Lord and his grace and his mercy and she was able to experience the joy of the Lord. And I think if I ever had the joy of the Lord when you could just meditate on his goodness uh, both day and night. Sometimes you sit there and you just get happy. Your soul gets happy. When you think about what the Lord has done for you and his goodness. Anyone here ever had those beautiful moments uh, in your life uh, where you have lived beside still waters, uh, no storms raging, no sickness in your body, time in your life is like the still waters. Uh, then, uh, like David, there were moments when God uh, was restoring her. Yeah, you know, uh, when, has anyone had those moments in your life? When God brought you to a place where you need to be pleasant in your life? Anybody ever been tired? Anybody ever been weak? Everybody ever been sick? Anybody been down and looked like you weren't going to get well? But then the Lord showed up in your life and the Lord renewed your strength. The Lord allowed you to run up with wings like eagles, allowed you uh, to run and not go with it. The Lord allowed you to walk and not faint. God restored your life. God restored your soul. The soul became your new zest for living. Uh, I, I visited sick uh, Sister Vicki uh, when she was in the hospital, out of the hospital, called to the home. But you know, she had this joy, a joy that the world could not give her and the circumstances of life could not take away. Yes. yes. It, you know, the word meant something. It meant something to her. And she trusted God. That's what Brother Dave was talking about. He said, I will trust God. I trust the Lord. I have confidence in Him. And all of us have moments like this in our lives. Uh, when David, like David has, when our soul uh, pants for the Lord, uh, when David needed to be replenished because life had got too difficult. And when the joy of living had gone out of him and the pleasure was no longer there, David hears, as I'm sure if you heard, the still quiet voice of, of her Lord and, and it felt the gentle touch of uh, there was uh, that only God can give that urges us to keep on keeping on. Uh, no matter how difficult the journey may be, God daily acknowledges us. Not only does God encourage us, but God leads us. Yeah, He leads me. Yes. He guides us. But He doesn't just do it willingly. So some of us will go around and we'll go around in a circle. Other of us will go off, get all off course. But God, the Lord, leads us and guides us in the right way. Yes. He leads us in the path of righteousness. Yes. In other words, God has ordained that we will live holy lives. Amen. God wants us to live a life worthy of Him. Yes. And so He encouraged us to be holy yeah. Yeah. and righteous. Not wrong in the day, but y'all probably say that man's crazy. Because I, I, you know, I believe God's Word. God's Word is true. Yes. And then we live in a society when we are rejecting God's words, and that's why we got so many problems we have in the world today. When you do things the world's way instead of God's way, all we're going to have is a mess. Yes. That's all we're going to have. But He leads us and guides us in the path of righteousness for His name's sake. And that in His name means to give honor to Him. Yes. You know, that's who we're supposed to glorify, right? Yes. We don't glorify ourselves. Vicki understood this. 
And she understood that life is not always going to be a rose garden. There are going to be some difficult moments in each and every one of our lives. There are some times when we got to climb up the rough side of the mountain. But, but the times that the, the psalmist called has a name for those times. He calls it, you know, walking through the valley. Yeah, yeah we got all kinds of different kinds of valleys in our lives. Have you ever been down in the valley? There are, oh, there are all kinds of valleys. There's the valley of despair. There's the valley of depression. There's the valley of sickness. There's the valley of hopelessness. It's all, but the greatest valley that we ever have to go through is the shadow of the valley of death. Yeah, y'all know death is a valley, don't you? But David says, you know, each day when I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will what? Feel no evil. How can you not be afraid? Y'all remember when we were little children, I'm working my way there, but y'all remember little children, uh, they got this commercial on CPI, y'all watched that commercial. They got this little girl in a bed, and, and then her daddy comes in, she has a daddy check under the bed, check all over the room, no monsters there, no monsters there. And, and then, then she feels safe because daddy has done this check, but this church on CPI alarm anyway, to make sure no boogie bag, y'all remember we talk about a boogie bag. They talk about a monster, y'all don't remember a boogie bag, right? Yeah, scared of monsters. And so, but what we have is that we have someone who we don't have to fear them because we don't go through the valleys by ourselves. Right. Oh, yeah, we don't walk through the valleys. God, the Lord, walks through the valleys with us. Yeah, yeah. And, and when we go to the valley, any good when we got somebody with you. Yeah, yeah. yeah not only will he be with you, he leads you and guides you. And this is the good news if you want to go by this valley. Of the shadow of the valley of death. Uh, y'all remember going to watch the dark shadows? None of y'all remember that movie, the TV show, The Dark Shadow. But you don't have to worry about the dark shadows if you got the light with you. And what we know is the reason why we can rejoice today is because Jesus says, I am that light. Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. So now we know who's walking in the valley with us. See, Jesus leads us in the valley, Jesus takes us in through the valley. And the good news today is Jesus brings us out of the valley. Yeah. And he's got the power because he is the only one that's defeated death. Yeah, y'all know that Jesus got killed. Y'all know he died. He died in a horrible death. They buried him uh, in a grave. Uh, and guess what? On Friday, it looked like death had won. Uh, on Saturday, the devil was probably doing uh, whatever the new day is. Uh, you know, y'all still do the electric slide. He was doing the electric slide all over the place. Uh, but I know what? Uh, he danced uh, all right Saturday night. Uh, but the good news is that early on Sunday morning, Jesus got up uh, in the valley. Jesus rose up and came out of the valley. And the same thing that Jesus has done, uh, Jesus made a gospel for you and I. And so we don't stay in the valley. But Jesus and even this text talks about when you come out of the valley, on the other side of the valley is a time of celebration. Yes. On the other side of the valley, Jesus sets up a banquet table. On the other side of the valley, even though your enemies are there, and y'all know death is our chief enemy, but on the other side, Jesus anoints our head with oil. On the other side, our blood running over. In other words, we got blessing about blessing about blessing and the chief blessing on the other side is eternal life. I'm so glad that Vicky knew the Lord for herself. I'm so glad that Vicky loved the Lord. She knew that the Lord is her shepherd. And as I prepare to take my seat, I want you to know that there's one more reason that we can rejoice. We can rejoice because of this confident assurance that David leads with us. Surely, surely, that means you can take it to the bank. Surely, that means it's a certainty. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Maybe if you take it, but how can goodness and mercy follow you? It means that you have to live again. There is life everlasting. I hear Jesus say, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father, what? It's not but by me. I 
in the house of the Lord. Yes, he will. Yeah. That means all our troubles will be gone. It means no more sickness, no more crime, yes, no more hospitals, no more dialysis, no more cancer, no more those things. All those things are left behind. And he said, I surely, I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And then you know what that means? It means for the rest of my days. And you know what you're going to do for the rest of your days? When you get to heaven, you're going to praise him. For the rest of your days, you'll be worshiping God. For the rest of your days, you'll be worshiping God. For the rest of your days, you'll be thanking God. Oh, you have a hallelujah good time. It's going to be glory over there. And, and I'm so glad that Jesus really knew about that place. Can't you hear us saying, can't you hear us saying, John, she's singing right now. And when she's down here, go on and she'll sing going up yonder. But what great joy is when you actually get up there. Yes. What a great blessing it is. When she, when she changed that song, man, she said, the Lord is my shepherd. Yes. I shall not want. Sure. Sure. Goodness and mercy yes. shall follow me oh. all the days of my life. Oh. Oh. And I will dwell mm -hmm. in the house of all family. Yes. So she's all right. She's got a new body, a body not made by hands, eternal throughout the ages. Feel the records of that charge. Won't you please stay as the choir sings, recessional, and we get further instructions from the funeral director. Everyone of the session families.
If anybody asks you Give me credit.